slowing the pace so I can hear from you. And then you're saying, this is my sanctuary. At the desk, at the, you know what I'm saying? Yes, this is yes, my sanctuary. Yes. Here I can rest in you. My anger, my foundation, I build my life on you. This is a sacred space, a holy ground. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, Just stand to your feet, lift your hands. We reverence you, God.
Lord, you can rest right here. We move out of the way for you to rest right here, Jesus. Cause right here. even right now begin to ask God to show you that place show you what right here is for you and in faith we can declare once again my storms won't shake me my anchor holds this firm foundation your I want you to declare by faith right now, right here, in this moment, with all of your flaws, with every mistake, with all of your successes, God is saying, I want you to declare that right here in this moment, it's holy. declare it holy is because God is here so we can say say fear fall. fear uh. bow here and now here, here. Now. now Jesus Jesus you changed everything. that's why we can declare You can say change. Whoa. It's happening now. Huh. Because God is here. We can say here. Now. Declare it. Say Jesus, you change everything. Change Have to go. Something's happening. Something's falling. Something's moving. I declare you. I dare you to declare this with faith. That Jesus is changing. Come on.
persons one more time and we say of God. That's what Jesus Moses had. He had a moment with God and God is saying every chain that you had back in Egypt, everything that tied you to the last season, God is saying in this moment, if you would by faith receive it, this can be a defining moment that right here, the way you look, how you feel, if you let Jesus in, he will change, he will transform, he will renew, he will redo. Everything that you thought was lost. Somebody say, Jesus, you change. Jesus, you change everything. Everything about me. Jesus, you change everything. about me. here I am <laughs> come on somebody say that out of your mouth say here I am come on hands lifted like you're surrendering say here I am all of me the only thing that can change this is you 
It's not the pills. It's not the position. It's not the title. It's not the placement. It's not the networking. It's not their co-signing. The only thing that can change what's in here is you, Jesus. So today, Father, we declare and we surrender. Ah, somebody say, I surrender. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, some of y'all have been holding on so tightly to what you thought God was trying to do in your life. And he's saying, I need you to surrender. Put your hands up. Let it go. He said, you thought you were going to do that. But my plan for you is so much greater than anything you've ever imagined. But I can't give you what I have if you won't let go of what you have. So I surrender. I Surrender. This is ministry for somebody right now. You and God say. Come on, all together, let's sing that. To me, a lead us in that. Somebody say. I Somebody, this is the moment you came for. Some of y'all need to declare this holy. Just lift your hands one more time and just say. Now, y'all, say. God's trying to confirm, affirm, change, transform. We're at the end of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Why don't we want God to show up? We didn't spend 21 days at the praying and pushing away our plate to go with a program. We, we spent 21 days that the reward of this is God. The reward of this is him touching us. The reward of this is him meeting us, confirming and affirming who he's called us to be. Father, we came into this 21 days of prayer and fasting with a lot of requests. At the end of it all, all we want is you, God. Father, all we want is your will for our lives. And we are so convinced that here is holy that we are saying, I surrender all. The business, I surrender it. The family, the relationship, I surrender it. Everything that I've been trying to white knuckle my way through, trying to hold and carry. The church, it's yours, I surrender. You don't need two saviors. So Father, I relinquish the role I've been playing as savior in my own life. Ooh, that's a word for somebody right there. Every place in my life where I tried to come in and save the day. 
where I tried to protect the reputation where I tried to move the needle forward where I tried to impress somebody today I resign from the position of Savior in my own life and I say all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all in your home take this moment it's holy we've been saying it we've been saying it here is holy don't don't lose this moment right here chasing what you what you think it should be God saying I want to speak to you right here I feel the anointing of God yeah 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 just receive this for a second receive it you might want to take a kneeling position I see people in their homes kneeling and saying God I'm giving it up you're making an altar right right where you are pastor Mike how can I make this an altar how can in this moment it be an altar how, how, how can I how can I take a low position a humble position right now God father you don't know what's going on in my life and God's saying, I've ordained what's going on. Woo. And if I didn't make it, I'll use it. Ah. So this is my sanctuary. Here I can rest in you. My Right here. I put my trust in you, my anchor, my foundation. Can you just get in a holy spot right now and just sing that again? Right here. This is my sanctuary. This is my sanctuary. In my pajamas. Here I can with the kids running around. God said, right there, it's holy. With the thoughts you just had last night, God said, this, this is my sanctuary. No money in the bank. I put my trust in Not you. having a job that's my stable. God's saying, will you trust me? Will you build me an altar? Say, this is. This is my Woo. sanctuary. Woo. Here I can rest. I can rest. Because if God's here, I don't got to work and labor and do. I just have to be.
we give up control. We trust you for real. No more waiting for the perfect moment. Here is holy. Here you're speaking. Here you're moving. Here you're loving. Here you're affirming. Here you're demanding what you put on the inside of us. Here. Here. Lift that up in the mic, sis. Come on, just a... God, I feel your presence. Y'all better stop waiting on something else to happen. God is trying to meet you right here. is going to feel like 
waiting on the Lord. Many of you in this moment have been feeling anxious. I feel it. It's like, okay, that's enough. What's next? Like, what's next? Like, what's next? Like, what's next? That feeling is trying to draw you from here. Like there has something better for you. And God's saying, but here is holy. I, I just see this being a prophetic picture of us wanting to move our business forward. And God said, but I just need you to focus on loving the people you got right here. But we need six other positions and we need, and God said, yeah, 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 I got all that. But I just need you to stay right here. Well, when we move into that new neighborhood and the new school system and our kids are able to get in and God said, but I can do a miracle right here. Don't rush God. He's taking the hustle out of his house. When you love being with somebody, time don't matter. When me and my wife get in that place and snuggle and, 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 and we, it, it literally is like time doesn't matter anymore. It's only people you're not comfortable with that you're always looking at how much longer do I got to stay with you. And God's saying, stop treating me like a stranger. Would you just sit with me? Would you just, on a Sunday morning with thousands of people watching, Michael, would you just display a relationship surrendered? I said, God, here I am. Come on, somebody just say, here I am. Just one more time with faith, say, here I am. of God in this moment y'all mm. Father I thank you thank you for what you've said thank you for what you've done thank you for your word thank you for this phrase meaning more than what I'm saying do y'all know the Holy Spirit speaking right now I just feel this right now there's confirmation revelation there's transformation uh -huh, thank you Lord he said in this moment there's delineation he's, he's cutting some stuff he's drawing lines in the sand he's putting parameters around stuff remember the phrase of this year is here is holy but the subtitle is this is the year of intentional limitation he's showing some of y'all where the borders are not them well God then who he said I'll show you but you better draw a line right there you can't watch that no more but God that's what me and all of my friends talk about he said but for what I'm about to do here is holy cut it off God it's too hard for me cut the whole service off uh oh what do you want to do to get the purpose of God you may have to cut Hulu and Netflix in this next season so you don't even have the opportunity one clap you know why because our comfort is stronger in most of us than our calling and God's saying but if I'm telling you it's holy you better be ready to draw some lines I don't care if you're in high school God said you can be the difference maker in that high school go sit at that lunch table open up your Bible and you don't got to put up a flyer people are watching you there's something different about you you're separated you're holy don't try to push it on everybody else but I told you to do something and if it's for one other person he said here will be holy here I am God just one more time in faith say here I am God, as a church, as a pastor, as a leader, as a father, as a husband, as a son, you can have every facet of me. 
here I am. The stuff, God, I don't even like letting people know I do because then there may be a demand on me. Today, I'm surrendering every part of me. Ooh, that was for a lot of y'all. There's parts you've been holding back because you know if, if anybody sees what's actually in you, there'll be a responsibility and a demand. And God is saying, why would you hide what I gave you as your gift? God, here we are. Somebody say, here I am. Just lift that up. Say, here I am to worship. Stay there. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together worthy. All together worthy. All together wonderful to Watch this say, say here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Say here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. What am I here to do? Say, say, here I am. Exodus, check, 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 check. In Exodus chapter 3, I want to read you a portion of scripture. This is what the Bible says to Moses in Exodus 3, verse 12. God answered, I will be with you. This is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But God, but Moses protested, if I go to the people, of Egypt and I tell if I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you 
they will ask you, what is your name? Then you shall tell them. And God replied to Moses, I am who I am. I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. As we were praying, I felt so clearly God said, I want you to know that here I am is not just identification, but it's invitation. Huh. Because the name of God is I am. When you say here I am, you're not only identifying for yourself, but you're telling God, here I am. Mm. Some of you, where God, God where, where will God meet you? You say here. When you say I am, God says I'll meet you right there. Some of you, there are specific areas that you're in. When you're saying here I am, you're recognizing yourself but you're also inviting God. So when you say, here I am in the marriage, when you say, here I am in the argument, when you say, here I am come in the anxiety, on, come when come you on. say, here I am in come my on. worry, when you say, here I am in my lack yes, of, of ability, God says, exactly, because when you say my name, that's all you, we're talking about the name of Jesus. You don't have to have the answer. You just have to say the answer's name. Yes, when sir. you say, here I am, here, come into my marriage. Here, come into my doubt. Yes. Here, come into my fear. Here, come into my worry. Here, come right here. Here I am. Yes, sir. Say, here I am. 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 Yeah, yeah. Here I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scripture said, um, this will be your sign. Your worship will be the sign. Like you're going you're gonna to worship at a place you've been to before, Moses. But this time when I deliver you, I need you to lead people to worship me. And I don't. I'm not exactly sure um, if our worship individual, I'm gonna speak for me, has not been attached to um, an outcome. Can I be transparent? Can I, can, can, can I, can I get vulnerable? Can, can I take off my protection? Can, can I acknowledge at the place that God has called us to be as a church that we got to We got to do like Moses and say, no, nah, I'm not going to stay right here at this place. Everybody say, here I am. That's availability. But when I take off my protection, that's vulnerability. And some of y'all have been so protected by your pedigree so protected by your degrees so protected by your tenure so protected by your age can't nobody tell me nothing i've been following god longer but you're still in the same place and god might have sent this young man in a hot red jacket this is too hot to be a fear i just jesus be a fence but he sent me up here to maybe Awaken something on the inside of you that maybe maybe there can be a little more reckless abandonment in your life when it comes to the things of God. Maybe you can get a little more vulnerable. See, see, a lot of people don't understand 
that 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 thing that we're talking about of availability to God we can do that here I am God whatever you want to do but showing people who I really am taking down my attitude it protected me in a different season it was the only thing I had to keep the people that were supposed to lead me and love me from hurting me so I've built these walls I ain't talking to them they remind me of the place of hurt I'm not going to ask for help I'm not going to be vulnerable because I don't want to get hurt again and God's saying but here I am <laughs> so I need you to take off your protection but the real thing God wanted Moses to do at that burning bush is he wanted him to feel again some of y'all haven't felt in a long time. You haven't been able to feel your emotions. You haven't been able to feel God. You've been going through the motions. You've been doing everything you were supposed to do. But you have not been able to feel. When he put his feet on the ground, that wasn't availability or vulnerability. God wanted him to have sensitivity. Feel my presence. Feel that I'm here. Feel that I'm with you. Feel that here is holy. Feel the cool of the sand. Feel the rock. Feel the thing. Feel. I need you to, everybody say feel. I told our church last week, after all the cameras went off, I said here is holy. And what that practically means is our church has been full of passion but it has not had enough compassion. We haven't felt enough. And everybody's trying to get to the next thing and the next crazy miracle and the next thing. And could it be that God says, as you rush to the next thing, you don't feel what I want you to feel here. Moses will never forget this meeting with God because he hit another sense in his life. Not sense, but like our senses. He saw the burning bush. He smelled the smoke. But he felt. God, help us to feel again. Somebody just put your hand on your heart right now. And just say, God, help me to feel again. Woo! You're so cold and you cut people off so quick. And you think it's a trait that should be admired. I can cut somebody off. God said, that is not me. Did I cut you off like that? Or did I have come passion? Some of our family issues are not unsolvable. There's just a lack of compassion. Nobody's feeling. Nobody's feeling. And today God wants us to feel how do you feel in his presence that's where Moses was in a place of worship and he took off his his protection and felt for the first time in years husbands and wives the reason it's not clicking you don't feel it you're not sensitive to one another and God's saying I want this week to be a week of sensitivity Right now, if Tony just starts hitting the drums wildly, the thing we would tell him is, what are you doing? You're not being sensitive. When a baby is at the point of almost being asleep and somebody turns on the TV too loud, that's means for divorce. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I've, I've been working an hour and a half to get this baby right here. And you're not being sensitive. I just lost somebody I love. And then you make a joke about death. What we would say to somebody is you're not being sensitive. Why is it that God says I'll speak to you in a still, small, 
Why, why would he say steel small voice? I want the thunderous God, the big God. You can be loud, but not sensitive. And what I want you to hear is the details. Everybody say details. This week I hear so strongly, y'all, is God saying, I want this to be the most sensitive week of your life. I want you to create an atmosphere that has a lower volume than your regular weeks. I want the noise to turn down this week. Well, I go here and it's such and such birthday and this is where I'm doing all that's noise. God's been speaking to you the whole time, but you can't hear him because he's whispering. You're not close. God had to take Moses to a deserted place. He wasn't in a crowd of people. He wasn't in Egypt where he was the man. He wasn't even with Jephthro, his father-in-law. He was in the desert with some sheep who couldn't talk. And he took him to a deserted place and told him, put your feet on the ground and feel me. You know when people be like, do you feel me? That's what God's saying today. Do you feel me? I'm trying to work on your attitude. Do you feel me? I'm trying to give you a business plan that'll change your family for generations. Do you feel me? And right now, so much of the noise is so loud. And we're so protected. See, the crazy thing about it is in my shoes and those socks, it was a lot warmer around my feet. There is at least a 15 degree difference. And there was only an inch and a half, them is thick, two inches of soul between where I was and where I am now but it feels completely different do you have too much soul between you and God not s-o-l-e uh, but s-o-u-l are you too high to feel what God's trying to do in your life is this a time where you need to come low and humble yourself before the mighty hand of God say here I am somebody just say here I am that service I'm not I'm not messing with this mm -mm. this is the year of the cliffhanger Everything's not going to be resolved in a moment. And the church has been so used to like, okay, put a bow on it. Give me some wrapping and let my day go on. This is the year of the cliffhanger. There's going to be moments he calls you in and he's just going to say, okay, that's what I was going to do today. And, uh, I'll see you here tomorrow. And the uncomfortableness that some of y'all feel right. I came for a word. He is the living word. What are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You don't want my words. You don't, you don't want my YouTube. You don't want my tweets. You want Rhema. You want him to give you a word for yourself that nobody else, that's special. That proves that here is holy. Do you know nobody else got a word like that in history except Moses from a burning bush? He the only one ever got God to speak to him in that way. Separate, holy completely other than opposed to there it didn't happen when he went home that would have been there it happened here so if you're watching this and you're like what is going on <laughs> um we've decided a long time ago that we were a church that was going to elect 
God lead like we just decided. And there's thousands of people watching and thousands of people that will be watching through the week. But we decided we would never, ever perform. We would just get in his presence. And whatever happens, happens. You know how they say it is what it is. Because here, here is holy. I'm trying to model for you what it looks like to have to move on without resolve. You're going to have to start the business without them saying, I'm sorry. There won't be a resolve. And a lot of people are waiting to start until there's a resolve. And God is saying to you in this moment, he is like, don't rush me. I'm doing a work. If you would just be okay, everybody say here. You, you don't have to see the end of the credits yet. <laughs> There's alternate endings to this, depending on your faith and obedience. Uh, see, faith and obedience produce the ending of this movie. It's still being written. Saul, when he started the movie God had him in, he was supposed to have a descendant reigning on the throne forever. But Saul, through his disobedience and his lack of faith in God, rewrote a different ending to the story that God had already penned. He didn't acknowledge that here was holy. Y'all remember the story? When, when he was supposed to offer a sacrifice, and he, he was, and he was waiting on Samuel and Samuel was taking too long. Does it ever feel like what God's doing is taking too long? Y'all going to just leave me out here by myself. It's taking too long for you to give me a husband. It's taking too long for me to have my money. It's taking too long. He, he felt like it was taking too long. And because he didn't acknowledge that here was holy. He started looking at his enemies. And his enemy started to distract him from the promise that God had given through Samuel. And he started getting, the Bible says, hard pressed. Has anybody ever been hard pressed? Can we just have a therapy session right now? Has anybody ever been hard pressed? Okay, let me be, let's be real, real. Let's be hot, humble, open, and transparent. How many people have a hard pressed area right now? There's a, come on, let's not, has anybody ever? No, today. What do you do when you get hard pressed? Two weeks ago, when the spit hit the fan, that, that's when I found out what was it when I got hard pressed. When people were calling me out of my name, talking about my children, saying what my wife could do with spit. When, 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 I, when I saw the underbelly of the culture I'm called to love. God said, how do you respond when you're hard pressed? And Saul, in his anxiousness uh, to do the right thing, he was trying to offer sacrifices to the Lord, but he did it in the wrong timing. Some of y'all, what you're feeling is right. It's the right conviction. It's the, it's the right thing, but God's trying to build your character right here. So he's saying, don't move yet. Don't move. Don't, don't move yet. Don't stay. Stay at the job. Stay with those people. Stay at the church. Just stop. It's the right, it's the right conviction. I'm going to talk about it more next week, but Moses killing the Egyptian who was, who, who was hindering and damaging a Hebrew. It was the right conviction with the lack of character. God's not trying to take you off of what he put on you. He's just saying, wait on me. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. This is prophetic for you. He will renew your strength. He Lift it up, just say, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. He's 
about to renew your strength. It's the right thing. Just the wrong moment. Stay here. But God's going to do it. He's going to restore. He's going to revive. The next move, the next thing, it's, a, it's not there. It's here. Wait on the Lord. Feel the presence so of God. Just one more time. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He will renew your strength. So wait, I say. What would Saul's life have looked like? Had he waited right here, we would lit- David. We wouldn't know about David. Everybody loved David. He was the backup. Many people don't read this, but when Israel wanted a king, God chose Saul. But he wouldn't stay here long enough. For God to give him the victory. He spent the rest of his life. Chasing his favor. Even though he messed up. He still gave him David. To win victories for him. And he started listening. To the people over there. And over there. And over there. And over there. And over there, he started listening when they said, David slew 10,000, Saul 1,000. It messed with his identity because it wasn't anchored in God. If it was me, I would have been singing the song too. Did you hear the song they were singing about you? Boy, you can't. He was still the king. All the victories came back and went under his tutelage. But a moment that was supposed to be here, he didn't wait on God. I'm not going to press past any moment that I know God's doing something, even if I don't understand it. It's so Saul's raw emotion, where in the bleep is God right now? Through Samuel. Where is he? Did he oversleep? Somebody go find him. I'm pressed. This is uncomfortable. I can't stand this. He could have said all of that and still waited. Vent, but wait. Be pissed, but wait. Do a circle. Shout. Jump up and down. Do jumping jacks, but wait. Y'all know that's what he told the disciples. When Jesus told his disciples what they needed to do, he said, all right, listen, I'm, I told y'all several times I'm leaving. But I want you to go wait until you're endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. I've given you the instruction to go. But don't go until you get what I want you to get here. The, in, the, 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 the great commission, go into all the world and make this. That's there. But before you do that, wait here. Until you get what you need to go out there and actually be affected. Jesus, I know. <laughs> Demons are looking you in your face in the industry God's called you to conquer in. And the reason you ain't got no power there is because you didn't get what you were supposed to get here. So we're telling ourselves right now, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Said he will renew 
frustrating here. It hurts here. I wish more people knew what was really going on here. But he sent you here to tell you to wait. Here, it's all gonna make sense real soon. But here is holy. He's doing something in your character so that you don't kill anything prematurely that God called to live. It's the right conviction. It's just the wrong moment. Here is holy. You're getting stronger as you wait. Just say, wait on the Lord, the Lord. Osby, what happens when they wait? What happens? They on the Lord shall Something's happening. Yeah. They shall mount up. Yeah. Yeah. Like an eagle. Yeah. And so yeah. They shall walk. Uh-huh. Not grow weary. Yeah. They shall run. I dare you to say it. And not fail. That's what happens when you Feel the presence of God. Faith is rising in this place. Somebody say, they that wait. Hey, on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings. He's gonna do it right here. From here. You don't need anything. All you have is all you need. From right here. He's gonna change it all from right here. renew our strength to stay here we're gonna be faithful here <laughs> somebody say I'm gonna be faithful here uh, see this is our confession say I am here and because God is here here is holy this is our confession all year why well, I messed up what do I say? I am here. And because God is here, what do we say? Here is hope. Well, they just left me and I'm hurting. And I never saw my life without them. But let's be ones that say, you know what? I'm going to take off my protection. I'm going to get vulnerable. I'm going to feel this thing. <laughs> Charles, I want to preach it, but I'm going to wait till next week. But I need to let everybody, especially men, know that sensitivity is strength. 
I'm going to preach this thing next week, how I feel this thing, y'all. Next week is our seventh year anniversary as pastors and 23 years of Greenwood Christian Center being Transformation Church. And God wanted the word I share next week to marinate for an entire week. Y'all know when food is real good. Some of y'all been eating that fast food microwavable, but when food is real good, is when it's sitting in them juices for a while. We're gonna normalize sensitivity. We're gonna, we're gonna normalize being able to feel. Demario, we're, we're going to start a new revolution of men of God that stand next to women of God. It won't be that the women carry the church because they can feel. That's the reason. That's the reason that they've been able to carry because men have been taught, you ain't supposed to feel that. Shut up. Don't feel that. Stop crying. That don't mean nothing. And God said, but I had compassion. And that's why we have to transform our minds. We're going to raise sons that know how to feel. We're going to raise daughters that know how to feel. We're going to raise disciples that know how to what? Feel. Because it's only in the feeling that I know how to respond, not react. Most of our Christian life has been spent reacting. somebody's heart when I know what you've been through if you knew me when I spit on Brenton's uh, face that's the third time I've done that that wasn't the first time or the second I did somebody else's church but the people who reacted didn't know me the people who knew me they responded my wife said, that was Michael. That was the most disgusting thing you've ever done on the platform form before. I, I couldn't even watch it. But I love you. And I knew your heart behind it. And next time, just act like you spit. And then just... She didn't react. She what? Respond. And so many of us because we haven't gotten vulnerable enough to feel. We won't sit with nobody long enough to hear their story. We're still married to the version of our husband and wife that we got 10 years ago. And we haven't heard, been sensitive to the changes. You're not married to who you married. Oh, that's a whole word. You're not married to who you're married. Just how your kids at five are different than they are at 15. But the problem is, well, I told you at three that you were going to be great. Why you, why you don't got confidence now? You wasn't sensitive to in sixth grade where that teacher stole their... You, 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 weren't, you weren't sensitive to be able to see every time they go to that camp, they come back just a little. How was camp? Oh, okay, that was great. I mean, and you're not seeing because you don't feel. Many of us are who we are today, not because we wanted to be it, because our protection wasn't sensitive. They couldn't tell we got touched. Uh oh. They, nobody saw how I started acting negatively. When it came to anything about church, nobody saw how I started having an affinity towards men or having an affinity towards women. Nobody saw. They never even they never even brought it up. They knew I stole, but they just beat me, but never asked me. They weren't sensitive. And so now I'm out here trying to fend myself and protect myself and trying to follow God open handed. But I want to fight, too, because Nobody's ever been sensitive enough to me. So it keeps me from being sensitive to others. 
And the one time I let them in, I saw their humanity. And that ain't never happening again. And some of y'all are living with such strongholds of inner vows. I'm prophesying to somebody right now. It's a stronghold of inner vows that you said, I'll never feel like this again. I'll never open up like that again. They're going to have to prove themselves to me over and nobody, including God, is going to jump that wall you've put up. You're going to have to let him in. God's not just coming after our availability or our vulnerability. He wants our sensitivity. Father, help us to feel. Oh. Come on, that's a prayer you probably have never prayed. God, help me to feel again. When I was a child, I felt some of us that was even robbed. God, help me not to just feel again. I'm not going to assume. Help me to feel for the first time. God, and I thank you as we're sensitive in your presence. You'll speak a word that confirms our calling. Moses, Moses. Michael, Michael. Blake, Blake. Mima, Mima. Tommy, Tommy. He's calling your name to let you know your call. And he said, could we pause this entire year and declare that here is holy Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Prashia, Prashia, Gary, Gary, Malia, Malia, Travis, Travis. He's calling you by name in a desert place so that you can know this ain't no fluke. This ain't a family prophecy. This is not a group, everybody on this side. I'm burning the bush and getting your attention in this place so you can know I'm talking directly to you. Jerry, Jerry. Roberta, Roberta. Tammy, Tammy, Will, Will. He's saying Butch, Butch. Samara, Samara. Demario, Demario. He, he say, he's saying, Matthew, Matthew, Patricia, Patricia, just in case you missed that it was me the first time, I'm calling you by name twice so that you can see here is holy. Help us to feel again, God. If you're in this place and you're feeling a stirring that you're like, I've never felt this before. Let, let me help. Let me help you. If you've been far from God, what God is doing right now is inviting you by his Holy Spirit into a relationship with him. This is a feeling that you can't get from making money and a feeling that you don't get from getting high or drinking or sleeping with somebody. This is a feeling that's like water after a 10 mile run see you can drink stuff when you're running but drinking sprite when you're running up mountains it's a counterfeit for what you need which is water there was a young woman at a well that was trying to get a drink and Jesus was there. She didn't know that this was the encounter that was going to change her life. Like many of you don't know that this is all a setup for your life to be changed. But what happened is he said, if, if you drink of the water I'm talking about, you'll never thirst again. This woman said, where's that water? She, he, he's like, right here. Where did he say it was? Here. He didn't say over there, don't go back into town, don't clean up, don't, don't. He asked her very vulnerable questions about her sleeping quarters, her sleeping partners, what she was doing. And he said, and I'll do this miracle right here. 
And I believe that's what God wants to do for you, no matter what you've done or how far you've gone and what you've said and who you've said it to and what inner vows God's saying. Would you just get vulnerable? Because I sent my son over 2,000 years ago to a cross to shed his blood and break his body so that you could be right here in this moment. I don't care how you got here. I don't care if it's on in a barber shop or a beauty salon or somebody's watching it real loud. The reason they turned it up because they want you to hear it. <laughs> they care about you. They're filled with compassion. They know what happened to them when they got this revelation of Jesus Christ and his peace and his joy begin to fill them from the inside. It doesn't make you a perfect person, but it makes you a progressing person. It's something that changes you. It changed me. It took me from being a liar, a manipulator, somebody who was addicted to pornography, somebody who had a lot of bad things in my heart. And God said, yeah, with all of that, if you surrender it to me and say, here I am, somebody say, here I am. He said, I'll take all of that. I'll use it for my glory. And I'm telling you today that today is the day of salvation. Right here. Not tomorrow, not next week. It's not promised to none of us. It's not no guarantee. But guess what is the gift we have at this moment? Here. That's why they call it a present. The present is here. And today I want to offer you to start a loving relationship with the God who, let me tell you a secret, he's been chasing you. His love found you at every club. His love found you in your pride. His love has been chasing you through all your successes, achievements, your validations from people. He's been right there. Saying, if you tired of all of that, here I am. And today, I want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior here. According to Romans 10, 9, all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. We're going to repent or turn from the way we've been doing it. And we're going to turn to God right here. Did you see what I did? I didn't have to take a step to turn. I can turn right here. I can be in the same place and everything. I'm seeing a whole different group of people on this side than I would on this side. But for me to see them over there, I have to everybody say turn. Look at all those beautiful faces and stories and moments and memories that are now available to me because I repented right today this is your sanctuary wherever you're at on the couch in the car on the porch somebody say this is my sanctuary God is tearing down the need for brick and mortar he is resurrecting sanctuaries wherever we are somebody say this is my sanctuary We've made this amazing. And God said, I don't need none of this. I'll put on a light show in the desert. Y'all know that's what the burning bush was, right? He put on a light show that was so spectacular that that means I got to go. I got to go see what that is. He don't need none of this. He'll do it right there at your office complex, watching on rebroadcast. He'll do it right here. And he's saying, it's just so I can have a relationship with you. God talking to Moses, how Jesus wants to talk to you, is not about anything other than a relationship. And how you come into that relationship is through Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one can even get to God except go through him. Let's do it. This is the day, right? And I'm telling you, this is the best decision you could ever make. On the count of three, I want you to take a crazy faith step. And I don't actually care who's around you because they will not stand with you when you stand before God. Every person will stand before God and have to give an account of their life. And the one thing that protects us there, that positions us there, 
that gives us a place there is what we do right here. And so today, I want you, let me be honest, I want you to choose Jesus because it transformed my life. And I know it'll transform yours. And on the count of three, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hand. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, I'm proud of you, but that don't even matter. God is writing your name in the Lamb's book of life. Three, just shoot your hand up all over the world, all over this building, all over this room. Oh, I need you to know heaven is rejoicing right now. Oh, it's turning up way better than these people are turning up. They stop singing holy, holy, holy because somebody just got separated and got made holy. At Transformation Church, we're a family. Nobody prays alone here. So there's 25,000 people that are about to pray this prayer. Some of them are in Texas. Some of them are in Japan. Some of them are in Israel. Others of them are in Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. I learned how to say that in the fourth grade. Haven't done that in a long time. That felt really good. It's what I learned from school. Um, <laughs> this is your moment. And we're a family. So everybody together for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ right now. Everybody say, God, here I am. Today, I surrender my life right here. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again with all power to change my life. And today, I'm ready. Do the work in me right here. Change me here. Renew me here transform me here i'm yours in jesus name amen can we welcome the hundreds matter of fact it might be thousands today of people that just made this place holy right here god has come into their life and right here he has transformed If you just made that decision, I am feeling glory right now. Like I'm feeling the weight of God's glory. Like I'm feeling like, I'm, I'm going to just tell you what I feel. I feel like God's saying, finally. Like that, you know, when somebody finally does, like what they, what you've been trying to get them to do for a long time. It's just like, he's like, all right, y'all, we can start it now. Bring the blessings, bring the faith. They finally, I've been trying to do this for so long. But finally, I found people with my heart right here. If you just accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to text SAVED to the number on the screen. And we're going to send you some resources. We're not going to hound you. We're going to help you. Because this is a journey. It's not just like, oh, everything changed today. Like, it's like, hey, we're going to keep walking this thing out. Your boy is learning decades into my relationship with God. I am not perfect at all, but I am progressing. And that's step by step. I heard Bishop say something to me earlier this week. He said, most people live their life from here to there. And he said, but in God, you just live your life in continual here's. I said, that's some, that's some 40 year plus wisdom right there. I don't even, I don't even know. He said, Michael, think about it. You're here talking about there, but if you just focus on here and then you focus on here and then you focus on here and then you focus on here, you don't go from here to there. You just live your life in a bunch of here's. What I'm saying on this journey with Christ he just wants you to focus on here. If you can't pray for more than 30 seconds, that's okay. Here. Because here is holy. Church people try to make you, come on, Terry, Terry. I don't talk to nobody that long. 
So give me a moment to build up my stamina. Even if that's what God want me to do. Because you talk to him one hour and then be a fool the rest of the 23 hours of the day. I just keep talking to him every hour. I'm just going to talk to him here and then I'm going to talk to him here and then I'm going to tell him I'm confused here and then I'm going to tell him I'm mad here. It don't matter where I'm at as long as he's there and I'm here. Here is holy. Well, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all don't know how to praise when God does something amazing. God, there's nobody like you. There's no God like Jehovah. You are awesome. You are worthy. You are mighty. Father God, you are the only one worthy to be praised. There is nobody that can be as strategic as you. So today we honor you. The fast has officially ended. I feel the presence of God. Now, this is my encouragement to you. If you are made holy in what you separated from, don't be so quick to leave here. Uh oh. You might eat a slice of chicken tonight, but don't. But don't run back into the habits, the hobbies, and the hell, honestly, that most of us were living in before God brought us here. Just by natural standards, they tell us it takes 21 days to build a habit. Why would you kill your habit on the day you built it? Don't sacrifice the last 21 days of sensitivity. We've been praying here every night at six o'clock, but maybe you keep praying every day at six o'clock until God says, stop. Well, God, how's it? It ain't killed you yet. You, you more, you feeling more empowered than you ever have. That's what the Daniel fast was for. Daniel said, let me do something holy. Let me do something separate. Let me not eat all the king's dainties and literally he said, then test me and see if I'm not 10 times better than everybody who you put against me. I'm declaring the elevation will be evident. What you do when nobody requires it will be the thing that allows your elevation to be evident. Before I came out here today, I did something I'd never done before. Mo as my witness. You saw me back there. I worked out this morning. I worked out six days this week. And, and uh, thank you. Okay. We all need encouragement from the sanctuary. Okay. I worked out six days this week. I worked out this morning at 630. Scott was there. I have to say somebody was there because people would be thinking I'm lying. No, I, would, I really did it. And I worked hard and it hurt. But when I was in the green room about to come out something said in me hit 10 push-ups this is not natural this is not normal but I felt something in my nature shifting and I was sitting there in the back and everybody I didn't ask like hey guys don't be weirded out by this. Never done this before. I just hit the ground. And I did 10 push-ups, jumped up, and God said to me, he said, this is the start of a new normal for you. And I started to think about it in that moment. He was changing me from what I feel was my habit before and he's developing something brand new. I'm just begging you, after we've been disciplined and doing the things and cutting off surfing, don't just go back to Instagram with the same level of recklessness that you left it with. I'm back, no, no. (laughs) 
you may go back for one day a week. Just, just be sensitive. You, you made a plan, but be sensitive. Do you want me to? I don't even, I, don't, I actually don't feel like it. Hold on, you blessed my business without posting. Hold on, you gave me more connections and visions in this season than I've had networking. I don't, I don't feel as comparison-y. Come on, it's not a word, but we just made a one. I don't, I don't feel as comparison-y. I feel more celebratory. I feel like I want to congratulate and send a voice call and text somebody and let them know they're doing good. What is that? It's the habits you've been building. That if you run back to the same diet, you're going to get the same results. But right here, here's all. Until next week. <laughs> um, Y'all, we're going to celebrate what God's done at this church in seven years of me and Pastor Natalie being the pastors and 23 years our founding pastors are in the building right now Bishop and Pastor Debbie we honor you and next week we're gonna honor you and we're gonna honor all of the people who have been faithful at this church this is what I'm asking you to do so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna put this whole thing up I don't care about the views I don't care about the copyright unmonetized do whatever you got to do people need to sense his presence what I'm asking everybody that's watching in Transformation Nation, share this link with 10 people. I'm, you ain't even got to say nothing. Just share the link and let the Holy Spirit do the rest of it. Text them, FaceTime them, ask somebody if you're a little older in age. If I'm not past the head to share the link and I just not really sure how to. The only links I know is this cubic circumference. <laughs> okay, whatever. This is why we know it's time to go. <laughs> Ask somebody. How will they know if somebody don't tell them? I love you. I believe in you. Father, thank you that this will be the best week of sensitivity we've ever had. That we realize that here is holy. And God, we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for what you did right here. In Jesus' name, we agree. Somebody say, we expect. Amen. Amen. Go out and live a transformed life. Let's go.